postman Pat, postman Pat, postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, postman Pat, postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring. Letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really down at Greendale Village School, they had a model volcano. Just think, children, said Mr. Pringle, of all that rock going bubble, bubble, whoosh under the ground. You get your feet hot, said Lucy. No, you wouldn't, said Bill Thompson. You could wear your wellies. It was a long time before wellies were invented, said Mr. Pringle. The volcanoes made our lovely Greendale Hills long before there were any people, never mind wellies. Great holes in the ground with rock oozing out like toffee. Did you say toffee? said Tom. I like toffee. I said it was like toffee, said Mr. Pringle because it was all oozy, and it was so long ago that it was even before the dinosaurs came. You can all do a lovely painting tomorrow for open day, but it's home time now. <laughs> Pat was waiting at the gate for Julian. Hello there. Hi, Dad. Time to go home. Come on, Dad, I'm hungry. Bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. Bye, Pat. Bye. The next morning, it seemed very quiet in the village. When Pat came to collect the letters. Oh, yes, I certainly will. Did you say it was near Thompson Ground? Deary me. Yes, yes, I'll tell him. Bye for now. What was all that about, Mrs Goggins? Oh, dear. Well, that was PC Selby. It seems that there's a great gaping hole in the middle of the road near Thompson Ground. He says it's big enough to swallow a cow. Oh, I know what that means. Road closed. Diversions. Cones and bollards all over the place. How does he think I'm going to get through with all these letters and parcels? Talking about holes in the ground, Julian was on about volcanoes and earthquakes last night. Nay, Pat, it's only a hole in the road. Oh, we'll manage somehow. Bye for now. Bye, Pat. I wonder if dinosaurs would get letters. <laughs> and what did dinosaur cats look like? I bet they ate some huge fish, eh, Jess? Alf was out on his tractor. Pat stopped for a chat. What do you reckon to this hole in the road, Alf? 
What hole? I've seen nought. I've been ploughing since early morning. There's a great hole just outside your farm. P.C. Selby shut the road off. Oh dear, said I. I'm a great to get home. I'd best be off. Bye, bye. Bye. PC Selby and his diversions. Every time it ends up me going the long way round. Hey up. What's this? Oh no. Not another. And it's going back the other way. What? More diversions? <laughs> They're everywhere. Here we go again. Oh, this is awful. I'm getting dizzy going right and then left, then right again. I should go straight on. Maybe if I went left. But I can't. I could go right here. I've just spotted where we are, Jess. <laughs> We're back where we started. Then Alf came chugging along. Don't follow me, said Pat. I'm lost. If you follow these signs, you just go round in a big circle. Nay, Pat, I can't be bothered with all that, said Alf. I have to get home and get my dinner. Let's shift this clutter out of the way. No problem. That far. This what all the fuss is about, said Alf. <laughs> it doesn't look much to me. I've seen bigger, said Pat. A baby one. Now then, now then, what's going on there? Look out, here comes trouble. PC Selby. Come on, lads. You know this road's closed. You must have seen the signs. I'll have to take your names and addresses. Here, can you hold my tea? Don't be daft, Arthur. You've known us ever since we were in short trousers. Never mind that. We have to do it proper. Now then, how do you spell proceeding? Uh, you haven't got a pencil sharpener on you by any chance? Here we are. A nice, fresh cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Dorothy, said Pat. Just what we need. Dorothy, have you got anything to sharpen Arthur's pencil? Hang on. Pat, if you could just hold this. And then, uh, Arthur, pass your pencil to Dorothy. Then if you take these... But I've nothing to sharpen pencils with. I think there are two E's in proceeding. But is it a C or an S? I thought you said... Oh, um, bring the tea. Has anyone seen my notebook? Let's go home, Dot. I think it's going round in circles like my van. Talking about that, you've given me an idea. Now, 
If we made everything go through Alf's yard instead, we could probably... Uh, oh, dandelions everywhere. I wonder if there are any holes here. When Pat called on Miss Hubbard, she was acting very oddly, rodding about the garden with a stick. Very dangerous having holes in one's garden. Oh, morning, Pat. Morning, Miss Hubbard. You've not lost something, have you? Certainly not. I'm just taking precautions. Holes, you know, appearing without warning. P.C. Selby told me all about it. Oh, I wouldn't let it bother you, Miss Hubbard. It's only a small hole in the road. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat called on Ted Glenn. Hello, Bert. Hello there. There was a parcel for him. Sorry I'm a bit late today, said Pat. It's this blooming hole in the road. I've had to go all round Greendale to get here. Don't worry. Leave it to me. I'll have that hole filled in no time. A bag of cement, a bit of gravel and some tar. That'll sort it out. Oh, leftovers from a job in Pencaster. I knew it'd come in handy one day. Champion, said Pat. Ta-da, Pat. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. Having delivered all his letters, it was time to go back to the post office. But he stopped at Thompson Ground to see how things were going. There was a whole new set of signs, leading into a field and through Alf's yard, where Ted's lorry was parked. It's like town centre here, said Alf. My poor ends. That's if you can find them, poor things. They'll not lay for a fortnight. Here comes another. Oh, it's Sam. Good morning. See what I mean, Pat? It's terrible. He'll be all right, said Pat, as soon as Ted gets that hole filled in. Come on, slowly as you go. Careful now. Cheerio, called Dorothy from the kitchen door. And fresh biscuits straight from the oven. Just what I need, said Ted. We'll have a sup while that tar sets. Are you coming for your tea, Arthur? Mind the tar, will you? Help! Help! Here, don't let... Come back! Help! But something seemed to be keeping PC Selby. Help! Come back! Help! Did somebody shout help? Said Pat. He's not looking for his notebook, is he? Said Alf. He hasn't gone and trod in it, has he? What are you doing to my nice new tar? Fast setting stuff, that. A new kind, you know. You'll have to take your boots off and leave them in charge, said Pat. Come on, Arthur. Off with your boots. Don't be shy. One, two, and lift. Oops, here, hold on. Time for a bit of farm transport, said Alf. Oh! Hey, steady on. My boots. How am I going to walk? And you we'll need a new warning sign. You. Stay still and I'll tip you over. Very undignified, this. I'll never live it down. There. Danger. Police boots. Everybody should see that. I hope Dorothy's kept some tea hot. <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat.
postman hat, postman hat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them, maybe. You can never be sure there'll be knock Bring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat is collecting the post at Garner Bridge Post Office. What's this? A new poster? Garner Hall open to the public? Well, bless me. Mind you, it'll be a lovely show. It's a fine house. Oh, but Pat said Mrs. Goggins. Just think of all the cars and coaches and the litter. Oh, and Miss Hubbard did ask particular for you to drop in and have a word. I don't know what she wants. Mm, I expect it's something to do with this opening of Garner Hall. I'll not forget. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Cheerio. All right, Jess. I'm coming. You never know, Miss Hubbard might have some cream for you today. But I hope she doesn't want a hand with her blooming bees. I remember last time. Pat was still wondering what Miss Hubbard could want. No bees about anyway. Come in, Pat. Where are you, Miss Hubbard? In here, Pat. Just come through. There were piles of paper everywhere. Oh, now where has the fellow got to? Goodness me, Miss Hubbard. Hey up, there's a draft. Whoops! Oh, I've made a right mess. For heaven's sake, man, shut that door. Don't worry. I'll pick these up. Whoops. Sorry. Oh, don't make the place untidy, Pat. Just put that pile where you can. I wouldn't like to sort this lot out. I'm just getting ready for the grand opening of Garner Hall. The Major has asked me to show people round, and I must find out all about the old times in Greendale. Oh, yes, I saw the poster. Well, I don't know if much has happened in Greendale. No famous battles, no ghosts, nothing like that. Ah, don't be so sure, Pat. You never know what you'll find in some of these old papers. Tell you what, Pat, there's one thing I would like to see. Folks say Granny Dryden has a very old diary that her granddad kept, and he was head butler at Garner Hall a hundred years ago. Now, if you were to ask her, she might just lend it. It's worth a try. I'll ask her when I call with the letters. I feel sure she'll let you have it. Do please ask her. I'll take good care of it. I'll pop in when I finish my letters and let you know how I get on. Oops, I nearly forgot your post. Cheerio. Good man. Bye for now. Pat was on his way. 
His next stop was at Ted Glen. Hello, Ted. What's he doing? Making a right clatter. Ted! Hello, Pat. <laughs> you gave me quite a fright. I didn't hear you come in. Look at this. Just like new. All ready for the grand opening. I know. I've gone a haul. A knight in shining armor. What do you reckon, Pat? I've always fancied trying this stuff on. Well, now's your chance. I'll bring a tin opener next time I call, just in case you get stuck. <laughs> Here's some mail to go with it. Cheerio! Ta-da, Pat! Pat was on his way. His next stop was at Granny Dry Beach. Now then, what, what was it that Miss Hubbard wanted? Yeah. Hello, anybody at home? Ooh, Pat, I'm glad to see you. I've just been sorting out some old stuff. There's this diary. Come and have a look. Eee, it takes me back seeing these old pages. Wilfred's very words. Just as he wrote them all that long time ago. I never saw anything like it. Do you think I could borrow it so that Miss Hubbard could make a few notes for when she shows folk around? Well, I can't make it out properly with me glasses, so you might as well take it. Uh, I'll take great care of it. I promise. Bye, Pat. Bye, Granny Dryden. Cheerio. It was time for Pat to be getting along to Garner Hall. Miss Hubbard would be waiting for him and the precious diary. Gala Hall at last. Major Forbes was at the door looking out for Pat. Come along, Pat. I see that you've got the diary. Miss Hubbard's waiting for you. Pat, good man, and the diary. Now, let me see. There must be something here. Where do I put this lot? Over there, Ted. Near the chimney. Oops, makes a right clatter, this stuff does. Oh, how can I write the history of Garner Hall with this racket going on? Come and sit in the library, Miss Hubbard. You'll find it nice and peaceful in there. Oh, thank you, Major. So kind. Ted seemed to think the suit of armor was a new kind of jigsaw puzzle. Just about my size, I reckon. Mm, let's see. <laughs> I'd better leave you to it, Ted. Bye. Is that you, Pat? Um. I was on my way out. Just about to leave, Miss Hubbard. I want to show you something. Uh, something wrong? Pat, what am I going to do? Look at these diaries. Well, what's wrong with them, Miss Hubbard? Wrong? Wrong, Pat? There's not a thing in them that I can put in my story of Garner Hall. They're just... just boring, Pat. Hmm, it was a nice day today. 
Went fishing, caught three trout, <laughs> went to bed early. Well, yes, I see what you mean. Nothing very historical about that. Historical? Oh, that, it makes me feel hysterical. Look, I haven't got a single note on my paper, not a thing. Meanwhile, Ted seemed to be having trouble with the armor. Help, but get me out of here, I'm stuck. Get your tin opener, I, I can't see where... Ah. You can't leave me like this. Oh, boy. Ooh. Are you there, Pat? This armor's a bit stiff. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Pat, come and see. There's some monster going straight through the flower beds in a suit of armor. Look. Let's have a look. You're right. A suit of armor. <laughs> and I think I know who's in it. Hmm. Oh, my heck. Oh. Ah. Oh, me back. Where am I? You can't leave me like this. Get me the fire brigade. What's this in front here? Ow! Oh, bloody <laughs> Did you say, Pat, did you say my suit of armor, eh, what? Out here, in the flower beds, parading about? Uh, yes, Major. It was... It should be in the hall. I know, Major, but look at your flowers. All crushed and spoilt. Badgers, foxes, deer, no stopping the blighters. That's what it is. <laughs> Sounds more like an elephant, Major. The whole herd of them, if you ask me, Pat. Miss Hubbard was waving like mad from the window. I think it's gone back inside. Come along, Major. Which way? This way! Follow me! Charge! Where is he? Dashed if the fellow's disappeared again. I'm sure I heard something in here. But the suit of armor! It's gone! What was that? Sounds as though you've got mice. <laughs> Big metal ones. It came from behind that door. If only I could see where I'm going. Hey, look at this. A door. And a secret passage. Hello, suit of armor. Hello, everybody. Glad to get this helmet off. Got stuck. Couldn't see a thing. It's so dark in here. But what's this? I found an old book in your secret cupboard, Major. Good fellow. Might be something Miss Hubbard could use. Something for me? Oh, what have you found? Old papers. What luck. Just what we need. Hmm, yes. <laughs> Good gracious. <laughs> Incredible. Just the stuff. And at the last minute, too. Very lucky. You never know what skeletons there might be in an old cupboard. Uh, uh, yes, well, um, time for tea, eh, what? Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, 
postman hat, postman hat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock. Bring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a warm morning in Greendale. And there were plenty of letters and parcels for Pat to deliver. That's the village just about done. Major Forbes was busy reading his paper. Morning, Major. Morning, Pat. I say, this print gets smaller and smaller. Can't see the half of it. Well, now, Major, I couldn't read a thing without my glasses. It might mean that you need a pair. It's ever so fuzzy and blurred without them. Oh, what a nuisance. I suppose I'll have to pop into Pencaster for an eye test. My Aunt Penny sat on her glasses once, smashed them to bits. <laughs> Very painful, what? Cheerio, Major. What would I do without my glasses? And another for Miss Hubbard. Oh, there you are, Pat. That's all the country letters sorted now. All ready for you. It's warming up now outside. Phew, that's better. Oh, nice. Hello, who's that? Ooh, Bayek. Ooh. Got you hold of that corner, Pat. It's a bit. Oops. It's a right weight. Ooh, do Ooh. be careful. Just get it on there. That's it. Push. I hope it's nothing that breaks easily. It went down with a bit of a thump. Nay, it's all right, but I'm glad to get it here all in one piece. Oh, Ted, what a monster. I can't be doing with this on my counter all morning. I rang Pencaster Parcel Office and they said they'd pick it up just as soon as possible. Just look at that time. I'd better be off. Where did I put my hat? And where am I... Um... Uh, uh, look under there, Pat. Here we go. Don't drop it. Uh, I can feel something. Oh. Oh. Dear me. Oh, Pat. Are those your glasses? What's left of them? They're not much use now. How am I going to deliver these letters? I can't see to drive, never mind read the addresses. Now, Pat, Ted can take you home in his lorry, and you can get your spare pair of glasses. What spare pair? Oh, Pat, 
haven't you got a spare pair? No, I've never broken them before. I've had these for years and years. Well, you'll have to borrow some, Pat. You can try my old ones. They might do. Don't worry, Pat. We can take the letters round in the lorry. I can give you a hand. Well, I certainly won't be able to drive. Here we are. Now, give these a try, Pat. Oh, Ta. Um... <clears throat> well, it's better than nothing. Just a bit fuzzy. Oh, we'll manage somehow. Here we are. Thanks, Mrs. Goggins. Bye for now. Oh, dear. Do oh, be dear. careful, Pat. Oh, goodness me. Oh. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on him. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Goggins. You can see that he needs looking after. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Oops. <laughs> Dr. Gilbertson was out doing her shopping. Hmm. <laughs> ah, who's this? Um, hello. Getting hot, isn't it? Um, now then, Dorothy. Uh, I've got lots of letters for you. Hmm. <laughs> um, this looks like one of yours. Here we are. Have a good read. But that's not Dorothy. Oh, uh, oh. Are you feeling ill, Pat? I'm sorry, Doctor. It's my glasses, squashed flat under a parcel. <laughs> they don't look squashed to me. These are your letters, Doctor. What on earth is going on? Better be on our way with the letters. <laughs> the next stop was at the church. I think this lot has got all modelled. Tell you what, Pat, we can let the tailgate down. And we'll have a good place to sort them out. I'll just deliver this lot whilst you sort the rest. Uh, are you sure you've got all the Reverend's letters? I'd know them with my eyes shut. Oops, what's this? Good Lord, deliver us. Um, you are Pat, aren't you? Sorry, Pat. I've got the wrong glasses on. I know just how you feel, Reverend. I've got Mrs. Goggins' old glasses on. Did you say? Yes, but it's a long story. Have some letters. Better be on my way, Reverend. Cheerio. But, Pat! This is for the Reverend, Pat. I think you've got them muddled again. Pat, these are not for me at all. They're a bit fuzzy, but I do believe it says Miss Hubbard on this one. You'll have to excuse him, Reverend. You see, his glasses were squashed flat. They look all right to me. It's a long story. And I think it'll be best if you read out all the addresses for me from now on, Ted. No problem. I wish I could help. But you see, my proper glasses... lost them somewhere. It's nice of you to offer to help. Thanks, Reverend. And cheerio. <sighs> I wonder where I've put them. Bye, Pat. Off they went. <laughs> Here we are, Thompson Ground.
There's Alf's catalog. Now you can't go wrong with that. Alf can't be far away. Anybody in? I wish Alf, ouch, wouldn't leave this for me to fall in. This looks more like it. A nice big letterbox, just the job. Catalogue away. Did you find Alf, then? Um, he wasn't about. I just popped it in their new letterbox. New letterbox? You haven't got a new letterbox. See for yourself. Show me. Here we are. Didn't I tell you? A new letterbox. <laughs> An old barn door with a missing plank, more like. Locked up as well. Now then, how are we going to get it back? Hang on, I'll get someone to help us. Let's have a look around. Hmm. If only I could see properly. Ouch! Where does this go? Could get in through the window. Anybody there? Anybody in? Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> what happened? Fat, where are you? Ted. Ooh, it's dark in here. Where's Ted? You all right, Fat? Hello, Ted. Having a nice talk to my barn door? Hello, Alf. Nay, nay. I'm talking to Pat. He's inside. Well, how's he got in there? It's all locked up. I don't know if I've got the key. Ted. Uh, let's see. You look a right mess, Pat. Here's your catalogue, Alf. Delivered safe and sound. Oh, Ted and Pat, back at last. I've been ringing round everywhere trying to track you down. There's nothing else gone wrong, has there? Oh, no, Pat. It's just that after you'd gone, I found these. They look awfully like yours. They must have slipped down behind the stamp book. That huge parcel must have given them a push. Magic. I can see again. Oh, that's lovely. They must be mine. Thank you, Mrs. Goggins. Hang on. We saw them all smashed up. No, we didn't. There must have been another pair of glasses on the counter. Whose could they be? Well... The Reverend came in before you this morning, and he must have left his glasses here. He didn't mind about his glasses being broken. Said he needed a new pair anyway. Well, I never. I wonder if I need glasses. The post would never have got through without you. Thanks, Ted. Back to the workshop. Cheerio. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Bye, Ted. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Pat, postman Pat, 
postman hat and his black and white cap. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them, maybe. You can never be sure there'll be knock Bring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man. There was a touch of spring in the air in Greendale. Pat was on his way. A lovely scent of blossom wafted in at his open window. There wasn't much post today, so he had time to stop. Oh, isn't it grand? Come on, Jess. Stretch your paws. Well, look who's here. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Oh, morning, Pat. Just the day for a bit of painting. Pat, my canvas, quick, catch it! I'll get it. Well caught, Head. Quite a lively picture this'll be. Here we are, Miss Hubbard, all safe. Oh, thank you, Pat. This is a most important canvas for the Ghana Bridge Art Show. The Pencaster Gazette's offering a prize. A very big prize, I believe. Just think of that. Well, I never saw that. I've been too busy sorting out letters to read the paper. Ah. Here we go. Hmm. Not a bad start. Well, uh, hmm, is it, I mean, all that yellow? It fair makes you squint. Now then, Pat, what do you think of that? Hmm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think the wind's trying to paint you. Oh, it's no good, Pat. I'll have to go home and paint a pot of flowers on the kitchen table. <laughs> Next day, Pat was out in his van again. There was a parcel for Ted. Morning, Ted. Morning, Pat. I hope you've got a parcel for me. I have, and it looks like something special. Special? <laughs> I should think so. Uh, it's a thing of me what's it for this doolally gadget I'm making for the Pencaster art show. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't mind having a go, but I don't think I could make a doolally what's it. Well, there's all sorts of things you could try. What about a spot of painting? I've plenty of tins with a bit left in. I'd be glad to get them used up. I was watching Miss Hubbard yesterday. It looks a bit messy, especially when the wind gets up. What you want is a nice lump of clay. That sounds more my style. But where could I get such a thing as a lump of clay? I've got a tin of some special stuff. 
They sent it for me to try out. It's like clay. I haven't got time to bother with it. You're welcome to try if you like. I'll have a go. Here you are, plenty there. Just read the instructions. Thanks, Ted. But what's this thing you're making? What does it do? Now then, don't tell anybody, Pat. It's to be a secret until the show opens. <laughs> They've never seen anything like this. It all works with the wind, you see. That's what this fan's here for. What? Uh, <clears throat> I'd better be off. I've had enough wind today to last me for a long time. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. What about a clay mouse, Jess? That might do. <laughs> At Greendale Post Office. What's this business about? Everybody was talking. Hello there, morning Pat. Morning Pat. Morning Major. About the art show. How wonderful to have an art show in our community. Last time I did any painting, what? Painted the fence all round the barracks. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess of it. When I was a girl, I was a wonder at needlework, embroidery, all that sort of thing. I can't hold a brush properly now. It's these rheumatics, you know. Oh, yes, I'm sure. I, I just have to sort out... These letters. It was six years some nice ago. Stuff. Committal. Oh, when I was on the I remember the land. We can make two little bits of it. I'm all set to touch my numbers. Quiet, everybody! Now, look, folks. I have these letters to sort out. And if you want any advice, you'd best go have a word with Mr. Pringle down at the school. Follow me. I wonder if he would accept the Mind the step. model I have. Painting by These numbers. Were cushions. Cross stitching. A bit faded by now. Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Do you know? If it's about that blessed poster and the art show, no, Pat, I don't. The whole of Greendale's all a buzz about it, and I'm tired of answering silly questions. Besides, there's a deal of post come in, so there'll be no time for chatting. Thanks, Mrs. Goggins. Bye, Pat. I'm thinking of having a go at something. Just wait and see. It was a quiet evening for Pat. Sarah was at the WI. Julian was doing his homework. Pat had a look at the Pencaster Gazette. Then he remembered. Now then, uh, what shall I make? First job, get it out of the tin. Uh, what does it say? I wish Ted hadn't spilt paint on it. Keep warm and mix a small amount of water. I can't see the rest. Never mind. Hey up! Oh dear! Ooh, it's... it's alive! Help! More like glue than clay. Oops! Oh! My goodness! Ooh, I'd better get a move on. Oh, dear. Get off! The next morning, Pat phoned Ted. Hello. Hello, Ted. Hey, old Pat. How you doing? I had a spot of bother with that clay stuff you gave me. Took me till bedtime to clean it up. What did you make? <laughs> a mess, that's what I made, Ted. Nothing else. You should have heard what Sarah said when she came home. You'll have to follow the instructions, but 
I'll see if I can get a leaflet about it. I know I've got one somewhere. Pat just had to have another try. It's beginning to look like... something familiar. Ah, <laughs> Jess was getting fidgety. At last, the day of the art show came. On the way to George Lancaster's, Pat's van was making some very peculiar noises. George heard the noise and came to have a look. Morning, George. What's wrong, Pat? Ooh, I don't know. She just conked out. Let's have a look. I know a thing or two about motors. Sam Waldron arrived. Hi, Sam. Hello, Pat. Anything wrong? Eh, uh, the main manifold to the exhaust. Mm. I suppose it'll do. This distributor looks icky. Hey, Pat! These plugs are mucky. Oh? Let's have a shifty. There's nothing wrong with the van, Pat. It's just that it won't run on fresh air. <laughs> You're out of petrol. Oh, what a noodle I am. And I'll miss the art show. They're picking the winner this afternoon. Here you are. I can spare you a drop. Enough to get you down to the village anyway. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Cheerio, bye. The van went much better with petrol in it. <laughs> but not for long. Oh dear. No. Oh, come on, Jess. We'll have to walk the rest of the way. Pat was out of puff when he got to the school. There was no sign of the judge. Hello, everybody. Hello, Pat. Hello, Pat. Am I too late? Ah, oh, hello, Pat. Ah, oh, there's Sarah. Hello, there. Pat, over here. She was looking after Pat's model of Jess. Someone had stuck a notice on it. Hello, Sarah. What's this? Special award, Greendale Prize. It's a special prize, Pat. Something about your model saving the show. I didn't think my model was... Hang on. There's something missing. His tail. His tail's missing. I gave him a nice bushy tail. Um... But, hello, Ted. Could you spare a minute? Is there a flood? There was a leak. Um, you see that pipe? That's a nice lump of clay wrapped round the pipe. That's Jesse's tail. The cold water makes the clay go hard, so it's just the thing to stop a leak. Without that, we would have had to close the show down. I think Jess deserves first prize. After all, he did help to stop a flood. He's a first prize cat, is our Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.
hat, Postman hat, Postman hat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a busy day in Greendale. Ted was on his way in his lorry to mend a hole in a roof. Pat was out early as well, but he was going slowly. He had such a load of parcels today, and some of them wanted to escape. What's that? Oh, the places some people throw their litter. Oh, oh no. It's a parcel. Now, I wonder who... Hmm, well, there's an address on it. I'd better give it to Pratt. Oh, hello, Pat. Morning. Parcel for you. Well, thank you very much. Sorry I'm a bit late. Bye. Morning, Pat. I found this lying in the street. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Dear me, I must have dropped it. My bag is so full today. Goodness me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. It's taken a bit of a knock, and I don't think Mrs. Cockett will be too pleased to get a muddy parcel. Now, don't worry, Miss Hubbard. I'll give it a wipe before I deliver it. It's very nice of you to pick it up for me. Thanks. I've never seen so many parcels. Bye for now. Soon be done now. Ooh, I'm glad that lot's finished. Oh, no. More parcels. Oh, Pat, I'm so sorry. I don't know where they're all coming from. It's worse than Christmas. What's going on? All the parcels in the world seem to be coming to Greendale. Just take as many as you can, then come back for another lot. That's the only way. Little by little, you'll manage. I think I need a bigger bag. <laughs> and arms like a gorilla. Now then, Jess, where are you going to sit? Uh, shove up a bit and make room for another parcel. Oh, you know, one of these days there won't be enough room for me to get in. <laughs> then you'll have to drive the van, Jess. today was Thompson Ground. Sam was there with Dorothy, pointing to coloured pictures in a big glossy catalogue. Pat had some parcels for her. 
Hello, Sam. Hello, Pat. You look busy. You can say that again. I've had a huge load of parcels today. Oh, hello, Pat. Are those parcels for me? Oh, sorry. Hello, Dorothy. Yes, they are. I can't think where they're all coming from. It's this here catalogue, Pat. It's got everything in. All the things I can't fit into my van. Folks love it. They're ordering stuff like mad, and they'll all come through the post. It's got skirts and blouses. Records and videos. All sorts of cups and mugs. Bye, Pat. I don't believe it. Comes in nice, neat parcels. Cheerio. Oh, dear. Bye, Sam. Well, I don't know how we're going to cope. Jess, <laughs> you'll have to help. Pat was on his way. He arrives at Ted Glenn's workshop. Ted was looking out for Pat. Hello, Pat. There was a big pile of parcels for Ted. Hey, Pat. <laughs> There's no need to throw them. Sorry about that, Ted. There's just too many of them. Everyone's ordering from that catalogue of Sam's. Well, you'll have to move with the times, Pat. You can't just go on staggering about with a bag overflowing with parcels. You'll hurt yourself. But I can't get the van down the small lanes or through the alleyways. Nay, nee, Pat. You want a high-tech solution. I'll have a think about it. I'm sure I can come up with something. I hope you can, before I get squashed under a pile of parcels. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. The next day, Major Forbes was on the lookout for a parcel he had sent for, when he spotted Pat behind a pile of parcels. Morning, Major. Hello, Pat. By Jove. There's my parcel right at the bottom. I'll just... Uh, no, don't! Oh! It's all right, Pat. I've got it. Cheerio! This is getting worse and worse. I can't even see where I'm going. One of these days, I'll bump into someone. And I was just saying I could do with a new car when Sam showed me that catalogue of his. Oh, yes, it's wonderful. There's everything in it. I know, but ordering napkins by post is one thing. Oh, someone's pushing. Now, Pat, you don't need to be so rough about delivering the mail. I'll be having some broken legs to mend. I'm sorry, Doctor. It's this mail order madness that's come over the whole of Greendale. Well, I think the post office should do something about it. It's not good for your health, <laughs> or for ours, if it comes to that. I'll put a word in with your boss in Pencaster. Thanks, Dr. Gilbertson. Bye. Bye, Pat. It was time to call on Ted again. He was fiddling with some mechanical bits. Morning, Ted. More parcels. Hello, Pat. Have a look at this. I think it'll solve your problem. The Mark I Super Speed Postal Scooter. <laughs> Just what the modern postman needs in the age of mail order. It looks grand, Ted. I like the parcel box in front. Is there room for a cat? <laughs> There's room for everything. Why don't you try it out? Have a test run. 
Well, I don't know how you've done it so quickly. I'll just try the seat. Uh, what are you doing, Ted? No! No, don't stop the engine! I think it needs a few adjustments before you use it for real, Pat. That Pat, he makes a great racket these days when he goes round with the village post. Aye, well, it is a bit noisy, but... Morning! He certainly gets round with the parcels now. There's nothing like a ride in someone's garden. Mr. Pringle wondered what the noise was, but soon found out. Morning, Mr. Pringle! The steep hill slowed back down a bit, but only when he was going up them. Hello, Pat. Is this one of yours? PC Selby was looking for Pat. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Can I have a quiet word? Morning, PC Selby. I thought you might be popping in. Oh, I've had some complaints. It's this high-speed postman of ours. Poor old Pat. He's only trying to do his job. Right enough, but he's making a dickens of a racket and endangering life and limb. Let me have a word with Pat. I know he'll listen to me. No need for him to be in trouble. I'll leave it to you, then. Thanks. See you, Mrs Goggins. Bye, PC Selby. That looks like P.C. Selby. Was that P.C. Selby just now? Yes, it was, Pat. And it was you he was talking about. Oh, <laughs> don't tell me. I can guess. He's really annoyed with you. All that noise and smoke. Tearing around on that scooter thing. But... How else can I deliver all the parcels on time, if they keep on coming like this? Well, Pat, just as it happens, there's a parcel for you today. For me? Who can be sending one to me? It's not something from one of Sam's catalogues, is it? It's one of those trolleys. A proper postal trolley. What do you reckon to this, Reverend? Wonderful. Ah, you see, the Lord will provide. No, <laughs> it came from the post office in Pencaster. It's to help me deal with all these parcels. I must be going. I've parcels to deliver. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. Come on, Jess. <laughs> you can give me a ride when we've done. But Jess wasn't at all sure about that. <laughs> Who ever heard of a cat pulling a trolley? Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat.
Goldman hat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat was out and about as usual with the village letters. <laughs> Morning, Peter. Morning, Pat. Morning, Pat. Morning, Dr. Gilbertson. Nothing for you today. Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Uh, <laughs> you look busy. Hello, Pat. Uh, give me a minute, will you, until I've sorted this out. Oh, direct this string. Now then, Mrs. Goggins, you just want to take it slowly. Once you find the end... Oh, that's easier said than done. Well, it must have an end. Now he tells me. Dear me, it does seem to be in a mess. Well, I better be on my way with these letters. <laughs> Good luck. Bye. Bye. I wonder if I could cut it into small pieces. Right, Jess. Ready for off. Jess had been waiting a long time. Never mind, Jess. There might be some mice in our spawn. Then you can have a good run. Pat and Jess were on their way. Along the winding lane. What's that? Hold on tight, Jess. piece of string across the road. Whatever can it be doing here? I hope it's not part of Mrs. Goggins' tangle. We'd better wind it up before anybody else gets caught up in it. Well, I never. It goes right over this wall. Jess came to have a look. <laughs> I should have known you'd want to play. I think we'd better see where it goes to. It goes right across the field. It must be a very long piece of string. Ooh. Oh dear. Come on, Jess. It looks like being a long walk. There was a scarecrow in the middle of the field holding the string for Pat. Hello, Mr. Scarecrow. Ah, uh, let's see. It's... Oh, it's a, it's a bit tight there. Oh, dear. There we are. Ah, that's much better. Sorry to leave you like this, Mr. Scarecrow, but I must go. My goodness. <laughs> but this field is muddy. Pat came to a wall. Jess was waiting for him. 
How much further does this string go? Over the wall. <laughs> Hello, Jess. Where have you been? Oh! oh. Ouch! Ow! Ooh, prickles. Oh, lots of them. Ow! I've lost Jess again. Oh, dear. No, I haven't. Now, Jess, don't go disappearing again. Ooh, I'll just get my puff back. Ah, that's better. Ooh, isn't it grand? How much further does this string go? And what have we here? Sheep. A field full of sheep. They were standing on his string. He started to pull. Can you all stand still for a minute whilst I sort this out? Bye bye, sheep. <laughs> Pat was thinking that it must be a very long piece of string to have come this far when he came to a gap in a wall. The string went through the gap and up another hill to a tall tree, where it finally disappeared into the leaves and branches. Well, there must be something special at the end of such a very long piece of string. Whatever can it be? Who is that behind the tree? Oh, goodness me. Young Katie and Tom. What are you doing here? And what are you looking such miseries about? It's our new super kite, Pat. Stuck in the top of this tree. <laughs> we can't get it down. Pat pulled at the string, but the kite would not move. Mm, it looks well and truly stuck. There's Peter. I wonder if he can help. Peter! Peter! What with the noise of the tractor, Peter Falk didn't hear Pat's call. Peter! Peter! Hello, Pat! I was just asking myself how to get the twins kite down from that big tree. I wonder if your tractor would be high enough for me to stand on. And... I'd like to help, Pat, but I don't think this tractor's big enough. Sorry, got to finish before it gets dark. Bye, Pat. Bye. Then Ted Glenn's lorry came round the corner. It had a ladder on the back. Mm. Ted! Ted! Stop a minute! Hello, Ted. Can we borrow your ladder for five minutes to get a kite out of that tree? Well, I can't be too late. I've got to mend Dr. Gilbertson's greenhouse before the frost gets at her tomatoes. It won't take long. Is that young Katie and Tom? Is it their kite? Yes, 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 it is. Right. Let's see what we can do. You go that in, Pat. Are you ready? I've got it. Pat and Ted soon had that ladder off the lorry. Round she goes. And over the wall. Uh, hang on, Ted. I'll nip into the field. Right you are. Whoops, a daisy. <laughs> Climbing walls. <laughs> Reminds me when I was young. Off we go. 
I could never have done this by myself, Ted. Not with a ladder like this, you couldn't. Up she goes. Mind your fingers. I'll hold the ladder, Pat, and you go and have a look. Mind yourself. I'll soon deal with this, never fear. Steady as you go. It was going to be a long climb, seeing it was a tall tree. Well, bless me. There's the kite. And Jess as well. How did you get here, Jess? Come on, Jess. Don't be frightened. Come on. Look out! Oh, there goes the kite. Quick, catch it! Hooray! Oh, thanks, oh, Pat. clever Pat! And clever Jess, too. We've got the kite, but poor old Jess is stuck up here now. Well, I'll have to get a move on. Dr. Gilbertson will never forgive me if the frost gets to her tomatoes. Jess got up the tree on his own, so I hope he can get down the way he went up. You don't need to bother about Jess. He's already here, waiting for you. Bless us all, has that cat got wings? Now, off you go home, Katie and Tom, before it gets dark. And keep a good hold on that kite. Bye, Pat. Bye-bye, Pat. Hang on. I'll give you a hand with that ladder. Are you ready, Pat? Ready when you are, Ted. Back to the lorry. Give it a push, Pat. Over to you, Ted. OK, now leave it to me. Thanks, Ted. Good luck with the greenhouse. Bye, Pat. Hello, have you popped up again? You get everywhere, don't you, Jess? Ted was on his way. Pat waved to him, then went to look for his van. He still had his letters to deliver. The only thing was, well, all the fields looked alike, and Pat didn't know which way to go. And Jess had disappeared again. Now, that looks like somebody I know. It was Mr. Pringle. Hello, Pat. Just out for a walk, you know. Looking for your van, maybe? Well, yes, I was, I was just wondering. Three fields that way. Turn left at the buggy bit. And you'll be there in a jiffy. It seemed much further than Mr Pringle had said. He came to a road. It looked like one that Pat knew. Ah, there's my van. Safe and sound. Where's Jess? I can't leave without him. <laughs> I should have guessed. Fast asleep in his basket. We'd better get these letters delivered. Don't want to be late for tea, <laughs> do we, Jess? Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat.
postman hat and his black and white cap. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock. Bring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It was a lovely summer morning in Greendale. Pat had finished delivering the village letters. Morning, all. Morning, Pat. Hello, Pat. Just the weather to make the garden grow. What a day. Well, <laughs> seems to be growing in here. I've never seen so many flowers. Uh, Mrs. Goggins. Morning, Pat. Mind your back. Hello, Sam. More flowers. There'll soon be no room for letters. I'll just put them here for the time being. Thanks, Sam. I hope I've not brought too many. Oh, Sam, we'll need a lot more if we're going to win the competition. No problem. There's plenty more. What's this competition you're on about? Oh, Pat, you must have heard about it. The best village competition, of course. So we'll have to do our best. I'm going to cover this old post office with flowers. I wondered what was going on. I never saw Greendale look so bright. I thought it was the nice weather. I suppose there'll be some judges coming to pick the winner. Yes, Pat, but nobody knows when they're coming. It'll be a surprise, like. Just to keep us on our toes. Bye for now. Bye. Cheerio. Well, I'd better get on with the post. Flowers or no flowers. Oh, Pat, when you call at Greendale Farm with that parcel, will you collect something for me? Mrs. Pottage promised me some tubs to put the flowers in outside the shop. I'll remember. Don't worry. No trouble. With all this sprucing up going on, I'll not be able to forget. Bye. Bye, Pat. <laughs> Whoops! Oi, look out! Hello, Ted. What are you doing up there? Hello, Pat. Just giving the wall a spot of fresh paint. For this here competition. <laughs> it's grand stuff, this new paint. You can put it anywhere. Yes, I've noticed. Even the letterbox has come out in spots. Aye, it flies about a bit. It'll come off with a bit of a rub. I don't know about best village competition. I reckon they should call it the busiest village competition. Oh, my van. It's caught the measles. Oh, dear. No, I don't know how that's happened. It does look a bit sickly. You'd best take it to see a doctor. <laughs> it's your blooming paint. You're meant to paint the post office, not everything for miles around. It needs a drop of water to get it off. Drop in at my place and I'll give it a good hosing down. See you later, Pat. Bye. We'd better get a move on, then. Look at your nose, Jess. 
You'd better watch out. Ted will be giving you a hose down if he sees that. It was time for a quick wash. Pat went to Greendale Farm first to get the tubs. Oh, Pat, hello. Hello there. And to give Mrs. Pottage her parcel. Thank you, Pat. The tubs are just over there by the barn, Pat. But um, <clears throat> keep a watch out for any strange plants you might see. <laughs> there were some very odd blooms in the tubs. Goodness me, a greater flowering Katie <laughs> and a giggling Tom tree. What will Mrs. Pottage grow next? <laughs> Hello, Pat. We're talking plants as well. And we can help you put our tubs in your van. This one first. Well, it looks like it. I'd better take it to see Dr. Glenn. He's good at curing spotty vans. Goodbye. Bye for now. Goodbye. Pat was on his way. He stopped at Ted Glenn. Looks as though Ted's ready for me. Hey, up, Pat. Hello, Ted. Hey, I thought you'd forgotten, Pat. I'll have to be quick. I've got to get down to Pencaster Station tomorrow to catch a train for Scotland. Where are you up to, Ted? It's young Caroline's wedding. Can't miss that. There's all sorts to do before I go. And I can't leave Mrs. Goggins with that hole in her roof. Anyway, I've got Peter Fogg lined up to give me a lift to the station on his motorbike. It'll be a day or two before I get back. And I don't want to leave the lorry down at the station. It might disappear. So I'll leave it in the village when I finish Mrs. Goggin's roof. Then you'll be able to keep an eye on it for me. Good idea, Ted. Have a good time at the wedding, and thanks for cleaning the van. Ta-da, Pat! Cheerio! The next day, the village was covered in flowers. There were tubs and flower pots in every street. Window boxes and baskets overflowing with plants. Flowers everywhere. Any time now, the judges would arrive to choose the best village. The next day, the phone rang in Pat's house. Hello? Yes? Oh. Are you sure? I mean, it is Ted's. Oh, you'd know it anywhere. Oh, what's it doing there? Just sitting there looking ugly. Oh, goodness. All that work making the village beautiful. I'll tell Pat. I'm sure he'll think of something. Yes, yes, right now. I'll tell him to hurry. Goodbye. Pat! Pat! And here is John to What's up? The Ted's left his lorry right by the village green. The judges for the competition are due any minute. It'll be the first thing they see. And all the flowers and work. It'll all go to waste. We'll ask him to move it. I expect he's gone to mend Mrs Goggins' roof. No, he's not at Mrs Goggins and nobody can find him. His workshop's locked and empty. Oh, now I remember. He's gone to Scotland. To Caroline's wedding. 
I meant to tell you. He'll be gone for a few days. I'd better go and see what I can do. Good luck, Pat. Bye. Bye. There the lorry was, just as Sarah had said, with Peter Fogg and Mr Pringle scratching their heads. They had tried to move the lorry, but the thing would not budge an inch. Oh, what a pity! Right by the village green. The judges simply cannot miss it. What's all this? What's going on? Peter Fogg and Mr Pringle explained to PC Selby about the lorry and the judges. Parking is allowed here. Quite legal. Can't do anything to move it. Uh, where's Pat? He might think of something. Pat had met Major Forbes at the post office, and he was telling him what had happened. Tell you what, uh, sort of thing we did in my army days. We'd cover it up, Ooh, hide it, camouflage, that's the word. Right, let's start. By the left, quick march. Alf came with his tractor and trailer to give a hand. And Peter Fogg loaded it with more flowers. Right you are, Alf. Pots and shrubs. Ooh, off you go. They all helped. Miss Hubbard was there. Dorothy Thompson found some big sheets of green cloth with pretend grass. Then the shrubs arrived. Well done, everybody. Keep it up. First the sides of the lorry were let down, then they covered it with the imitation grass, put the shrubs on together with some flower pots, and with a bit of fencing in front, it looked like a garden. The phones were ringing again, all over Greendale. What? We have? Miss Hubbard, we've won! Won? Did you say we've won? The best village competition? Lord bless us! What wonderful news! Well, twins, our tubs must have helped. We've won after all! Hooray! Yippee! I knew we could do it! Well, isn't that just marvellous news, Pat? That'll put Garner Bridge on the front page of the Pencaster Gazette. <laughs> I hear that the judges like, best of all, the special hillock covered with lovely flowers. Now, I never knew we had any such hillock in the village. Well, it won't be there for long, so you'd better get a good look at it. Yes, the judges couldn't believe their eyes. They came back twice to have another look. A day to remember. <laughs> it certainly was. Has anybody seen my lorry? I left it in the village before I went to Scotland and, well, I don't seem able to find it now. There's a mystery for you, PC Selby. Ted's lost his lorry. <laughs> uh, no, uh, nobody seems to, to have found a lorry. <laughs> uh, all I've heard <laughs> is about flower, flowers, <laughs> bushes and flowers, lots of them. <laughs> Will somebody tell me what the joke is? <laughs> Turned a lorry into a bunch of flowers. Oh, <laughs> they what? <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and 
sun is black and white. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock, ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Here he comes. It's Postman Pat on his way with the letters. Buzzing about Greendale. Busy as ever. There are some letters for Granny Dryden today. Won't be long, Jess. Is somebody busy with a spot of painting? <laughs> Looks like it. Hello, Granny Dryden. Morning, Pat. There was Granny Dryden standing on a box, sploshing at the wall with the paint. I can't hold a brush properly now. It's these rheumatics, you know. You're making a grand job of that. It's going to look lovely when you've finished. Nay, Pat, I'll not be able to make a right job of it. The ceiling wants doing, and I'll never reach that in all my days. Would you like a hand with it? I could borrow a stepladder from Ted. I'll pop round after work and do that ceiling for you in two ticks. You might need a drop more paint, though. Let's have a look. How much is there in this one? <laughs> I think it's empty. Do be careful. It's messy stuff. Oh! oh. Now you've gone and done it. All down your nice clean trousers. See if you can wipe it off before it soaks in. I think it's just making it worse. Spreading it out. Ooh, I'm sorry about your trousers. What is Sarah going to say? Never you worry about that. It was my fault. I, I should take more care. I expect that's what Sarah will say. I'll, uh, I'll nip home and change. These are not my best pair, luckily. Uh, I'll see you this evening. Oh, you are kind, Pat. Now mind how you go. Cheerio, Pat. Bye, Granny Dryden. Pat was on his way. Jess was wondering what the funny smell was. It didn't take long to get home.
Sarah did get a surprise. Hello. Anybody in? It's just me. Hello there. Oh, what are you doing back at this time of day? And what on earth have you done to your trousers? Um, it's only a drop of paint. You see, he told her all about Granny Dryden's ceiling. Well, you can't put your best pair on. I took them to the cleaners in Pencaster yesterday, and they won't be ready till Thursday. What am I going to do? You could look in the airing cupboard. I think there's an old pair that you do the gardening in. Well, it'll be better than nothing. I'll have a look. Sarah had her own work to get on with. When she saw Pat coming downstairs in his old trousers, she couldn't help laughing. <laughs> Are they long shorts or short longs? <laughs> I can't hang about any longer with all these letters to deliver. They'll do. Good luck, Pat. Bye. He was on his way again with rather chilly knees. Jess didn't know what to make of Pat's bare knees. He thought summer must have arrived early. They called on Miss Hubbard next. She had been doing a spot of gardening and nearly dropped the flowers she was carrying when she saw Pat. Oh, goodness me, Pat. <laughs> what are you doing in those shorts? It's not summer yet. They are not shorts, Miss Hubbard. They're an old pair of trousers. It's Granny Dryden, you see. She's painting her room, and she can't reach the ceiling. And... I don't believe a word of it. It's that post office. They're going all continental. Something to do with this common market business. Oh, what a lark! Did you say Granny Dryden was painting? Do you mean a picture? No. She's painting her sitting room, and I'm giving a hand with the ceiling. Well, I don't know what that's got to do with wearing Bermuda shorts. Hey-ho, it's a funny old world. But what she will need is plenty of sheets to cover the furniture. Oh, yes. I don't think she's got many. I didn't see any. She'll certainly need some sheets if you're going to help her. I've seen what a man can do with a pot of paint. I'll just get some out of the cupboard for you. Oh, dear. They are a bit on the short side. I hope I didn't get a pair of Julians by mistake. Here we are. Whoops! Oh! Oh! Help! A ghost! This thing. Get it off, I say. Oh. Is it... Is it you, Miss Hubbard? Th th of course it's me. What a question. Don't, don't just stand there. Get me out I of this. I can't help you if you jump around like that, Miss Hubbard. What an annoying business. Oh. 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 oh, what a relief. Now, Pat, pop that in your van and let's have no more nonsense about ghosts. Pat was on his way again. There was a cold breeze blowing, so he kept the sheet on his lap to keep his knees warm. They called it Ted Blen's workshop. There was no sign of Ted. Hello? Ted? Anyone at home? Pose? Where has he got to? Ted was getting his spring carrots in. When he heard somebody bumping about in his workshop, he thought he'd better go and have a look. You never know, it might be a burglar. 
Ted crept very quietly round to the door. Stop! Ooh. Oh, help! Uh, oh, Ted. Sorry, Pat. I thought you were a burglar. Postman come house painter, more like. I've promised to give Granny Dryden a hand with painting her ceiling. Um, do you think I could borrow a ladder? <laughs> I'll do better than that. I'll give you a hand. Um, <laughs> are you doing it before you go on holiday? Holiday? What gave you that idea, Ted? <laughs> it's the snazzy shorts. Very smart. Cheerio. Ta-da, Pat. I'll meet you tonight at Granny Dryden's with the ladders. Seven o'clock. Pat was off again. To Thompson Brown. Dorothy was tidying up in the yard. Oh, it's Pat. I wonder what he's brought today. Lots of letters today, Dorothy. And it's a right busy day. A touch of spring in the air. What with you getting all tidied up and Granny Dryden painting her room. I hope she has plenty of paint. It always takes twice as much as you think it's going to need. Well, she might be a bit short. <laughs> like you were trousers? Well, now, that's another story. We have plenty of pots in the barn. Always painting something we are. I'm sure we can spare a drop for Granny Dryden. Just keep a lookout for our silly ends. They get everywhere. Hey up. Ooh, it's a bit dark in here. This looks like the sort of thing. It's on a shelf. Have you found it? Ooh, it's a bit dark in here. Oh, help! A flying paint pot. Oh, ouch. I'll wait out here till you're done with the ends. Oh, <laughs> you do look nice. I love the feathery finish to go with the shorts, I suppose. Hmm. Time to go home. It was a busy scene at Granny Dryden's cottage that evening. We'll soon be done. It'll be just like new. I think I've about done my bit. It's a right bobby dazzler. And I have a surprise for you. We can clear this now. Come and sit down and admire your nice new ceiling. Oh, it's lovely. It really is. I could never have done it on my own. Oh, you are kind. Here, look at this. I've found another pot of paint. <laughs> Give it a good stir before it sets hard. Nay, it isn't a pot of paint at all. <laughs> it's a cake. A surprise, just to say thank you to both of you. Now that's the best pot of paint I ever saw. <laughs> and it's one you can't spill down your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.
Woohoo! We're Children's BBC and we're here to have fun. Then that's the thing for us. For a world of children's entertainment, there is no better. All the Children's BBC stars are waiting to entertain you. There's Fireman Sam. Right, do, sir. Pingu. <laughs> the Teletubbies. <laughs> Postman Pat. Oh, I know what that means. Williams Wish Wellingtons. Noddy. Thank you. Spider. Okie doke. So, can I help in any way? And the Dino Babies. It's really fun. What's going on? I'm telling the people about how all of you can be found on a series of fantastic videos. Are you sure? Of course I am. But video is not the only way to catch you. There are also great audio cassettes, fun-filled books that will entertain and educate, plus activity-packed CD-ROMs that provide hours of fun with puzzles, games and a chance for you to meet your favourite characters. I'd love to have them. Children's BBC. A world of fun. It was a lovely morning in Greendale. The flowers were blooming in Pat's garden. And so were the weeds. Pat was up early. Hmm, the garden needs a going over. I could do a spot of weeding before I go to work. Pat arrives at the garden shed. I'll need a spade. He soon found what he wanted. Here we are. Just the job. This'll help get rid of these blooming weeds. There was plenty to choose from. Just look at that time. Pat's going to be late with the post. Pat, you best leave those weeds now. Time's getting on. It's nearly quarter past. Hang on. I'll be there in a minute. I'll just shift this. Out you come. Ooh. Ouch! Oh dear. Help! Sarah was busy and didn't hear Pat come back. Ooh. Ouch! Oh, my back. Ooh. 
Are you all right, Pat? Mm. Oh, deary me, what's happened to you? Ooh. Oh, oh, it's my back. Oh, it doesn't half hurt. I was just pulling this grass. Here, let me straighten you up. Ow! Ow! Oh, oh stop, it's worse like that. Oh, I think I'd better call the doctor. I can't leave you standing Ouch. there all day, propped up on the table. Bless me. That's just the person I need. Dr Gilbertson happened to be passing. Hello, Doctor. Oh, what a piece of luck seeing you. Poor old Pat's hurt his back. Can you come in and have a look at him? Of course I can. Poor Pat. Now then, Pat, what have you been up to? Oh, hello, Doctor. Only a bit of weeding. Ooh, ow! It's my back. Let's have a look now. Does it hurt when I press here? Ow! Oh! Sorry about that. Yes, you've pulled more than grass. You've pulled a muscle. That's what you've done. And you need to rest it. A day in bed, and you'll be as right as rain. A day in bed? That's right. And I'll send round some lotion to help ease the oh, pain. Oh, dear. Bye for now. Cheerio, Doctor. Bye, and thank you. What about the post? I can't just stay in bed with all the letters and parcels waiting to be delivered. I know. You can take the letters. Oh, me? You're joking. Well, I, I suppose I could. I did work for the post office once, and I can drive. Give old Sid a ring in Pencaster. I'm sure you'll be able to fix it. There's nobody could do it better than you. You know the way round as well as I do. Well, I will. It'll make a nice change going out with the post. I'll give them a buzz right now. Oh, hello, Sid. Yes, yes, it's Sarah. I'm calling to see if I can replace Pat today. I can't stay here all day. He's got a bad back. That's fine. <laughs> yes, you too. Bye. There we are. That's all fixed up. Now, I wonder if Pat's hat will fit me. Oh, postwoman Sarah. <laughs> what a lark. I'm off, Pat. Sid gave the OK. Have a nice rest. Bye. Uh, bye, Sarah. Jess wondered what was going on. He went back inside to see if Pat was still there. Mrs. Goggins was busy at the post office. Here comes Pat. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Morning, Pat. Hello. Oh, it's Sarah. Where's Pat? He's hurt his back and has to stay in bed. I'm taking the post today. It's all arranged with Pencaster. Oh, that's all right then. I'm sorry to hear about Pat. There's not much post today. It's all in this bag. It'll be a bit of a change. For you, I mean. I hope it all goes well. Oh, I'm sure it will. Do you mind asking Dorothy Thompson for her carrot cake recipe? It's not something I could ask of Pat. Of course, don't worry. Cheerio! Sarah's next stop was at the village church. Hello? Anybody there? Morning, Reverend. Bless me. What's happened to your voice, Pat? Oh, it isn't Pat. Sarah, <laughs> what a surprise. And a parcel. Lovely. But where is Pat? 
laid up with a bad back for the day. Oh, the poor boy. I'll pop in and give him a game of chess. That'll take his mind off it. Thanks, Reverend. Cheerio. Goodbye, Sarah. Early in the morning, just as day is dawn, she picks up all the clothes back in her bag. <laughs> Sarah was on her way. At Thompson Ground, Dorothy Thompson was very busy in the kitchen. That sounds like Pat. Now I wonder if he's forgotten. It'll make a nice surprise. Morning, Pat. I just thought you... Oh, it's Sarah. Yes, Pat's in bed with a bad back. So I'm doing the post today. Pat, with a bad back? Today of all days? Oh, what's so special about today? Uh, today? Oh, uh, nothing. It's, um, well, you know, I, I just thought, um, oh dear. Oh, I nearly forgot. Mrs. Goggins asks if she can have you a carrot cake recipe. What? Carrot cake? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Just now. You see, but I can see you want to be on your way, and all that. What with all those letters to deliver, I'm not hold you up. Good luck. Cheerio. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I'll be off then. Goodbye. What's she in such a hurry for? Folks are acting a bit peculiar. I wonder if they're always like this. I must ask Pat. Sarah was on her way. It was the last call for the day at George Lancaster's place. He'll be looking forward to getting his Farmer's Weekly. But there was no sign of him. Anybody at home? Well, hello, Sarah. What a surprise. Hello, George. Here's your magazine. Pat's at home, in bed with a bad back. Um, you're early with the post. I mean, you mustn't be too quick, must you? Do you fancy a sandwich? No, thanks. I'm fine. I must be going. Well, um, how about a look at my prize ends, then? Now, isn't this one a beauty? You can hold her if you like. No, thanks, George. I really must be on my way. Nay, nay. You'll not go without a cup of tea, will you? I must see how Pat's getting on. Bye. Y you could take Pat some eggs. Bye, George. What a strange day it had been. She was hoping that Pat would be up and about. Hello, Jess. Have you been taking good care of Pat? Hello, Pat. I'm home. There was no answer. It's me, Sarah. There was still no reply. Dark. Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! 
And I thought Pat had forgotten. We all wanted you to have a special party as a big surprise. Have an anniversary cake. <laughs> I can tell you I had a shock when I saw you coming with the post. Well, I did smell baking, but you didn't give me time to ask about it. And here's one parcel that arrived late. Happy wedding anniversary. Oh, lovely. Oh, but I nearly forgot. How's your back? The ointment I gave him and the day's rest did wonders. Here's to Pat and Sarah. Oh. Hooray for Greendale! Hooray! Hooray! Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Thanks, Doctor. I'd better be on my way now with the post. There seems to be more and more these days. Now, don't you be overdoing it. <sighs> Just take it steady. You'll be fine if you'll only relax a bit more. Now, this should put you to rights. A few vitamins and a tonic to liven you up. That'll be grand. Thanks again. Cheerio. Bye, Pat. <laughs> what with being so tired and going to see the doctor, Pat was late. Oh, dear. There's no sign of him. Just look at the time. Where has Pat got to? <sighs> Morning. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Oh, dear. I'm so sleepy. Sorry I'm late. I popped in to see Dr. Gilbertson. Oh, I just feel so... Ooh, so sleepy. Ooh. Oh, Pat, I'm sorry to see you like this. What with all the posts to be delivered? If only they could send somebody from Pencaster to give a hand. A day or two, even. But it seems there's nobody to take your place. <laughs> Pat. Wake up, Pat. Best be getting on. Uh, what? <sighs> oh, oh, yes. Yes, I, I'd better be on my way. Bye. Bye, Pat. It must be nice being a cat. 
snoozing all day in a nice, warm, comfy van. Pat was slowly on his way. Greendale itself seemed sleepy today. But not in Ted Glenn's workshop. Something was clicking and whirring and beeping all day. Hello? What was happening? Ted! Morning, Pat. Sorry, can't stop. Morning, Ted. Whatever are you up to with all these boxes? Come and have a look at this. My new computer. Can you pass a pile of that paper? What? This? Whoops! It's all joined together. That's right, it keeps all the pages together. You bung it in this printer, and off we go. This looks complicated. What does it do? Nay, Pat. It's a drawing for a new invention. You can do it at a rate of knots on the computer. Not like pencil and paper. <laughs> it even keeps going while I'm asleep. Sounds all right to me. Do you think it could deliver letters while I'm asleep? A robot. That's what you need, Pat. Look at this book. It tells you how to make them. Computer controlled. No job too difficult, it says. A robot postman? I could do with one of those. It might be possible. Design it on the computer. Take a day or two, mind. Then I could have a day off. You could have a week off. Mrs. Goggins would just have to feed it with all the letters and parcels. Let me show you. I'll print out one of my designs on the new printer. Ooh. What's this? Little men walking about. <laughs> Robots. How are you going to print this lot out? I think the printer doesn't know how to use your new paper, Ted. Uh, now then, uh, don't worry, I I'll just... Uh, no, 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 which key do you press to stop it? Uh, I think I'd better get out of the way. Uh, is, it, is it this one? No, mm, this one? Maybe not. I'll pop in when you've got it sorted I'll out. Do this. Bye, Ted. No, it doesn't like that. Uh, oh, hey, oh. One of these. Oh. I suppose I could always pull the plug. <laughs> Ted must have sorted himself out. Because a few days after that, Mrs. Goggins heard a sound in the post office, and when she went to see what it was. Oh, gracious me! What is it? Shoo! One step nearer and you get this in your sprockets. Get back, you beastie. It's all right, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry it gave you a fright. You see, it's the new robot postman out for its test run to help give Pat a rest. Just try it with some of the post. Well, I don't know about that. Trusting the mail to such a contraption. There's no need to worry. It's all worked out by computer. Can't go wrong. Look, I'll show you. <laughs> show what you can do, Mr. Robot. <laughs> Oi! Look out! What I supposed. I've heard about these computers. Um, just needs a slight adjustment. Uh, let's see, uh, should this be up or down? I'll leave you to your contraption, Ted, if you don't mind. There's work to be done. <laughs> hey, up, look out, it's off. Out. Stop him, Ted! 
Oh dear. No, I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> Dearie me. Don't you fret, Mrs. Goggins. I'm after him. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ted. Pat had finished the first lot of post and was coming back for more. Have you seen a robot go by, Pat? It's gone off with the rest of the post. Is that what it was? Look, it's left a trail of letters. All we have to do is follow. Mrs. Goggins is none too pleased. I bet she isn't. Hey, up your robots found somebody. Good heavens! What is this creature? Oh, the dear thing's giving me something. Letters? But, but they are not for me. Oh, Pat and Ted, am I glad to see you. A tin monster rushed up to me and thrust these letters into my hand. And not one of them is for me. Did you see which way Get he went, off. Reverend? Get him off! Get him off! Shoo! Go oh, away! Crumbs. Oh, good heavens, what is it? I'll bleed the Martians have oh, landed! Well, what is going on? Just switch you off. Hey, give over. It's not for me, you idiot. Come back. Oh dear, it's not programmed to come back. George, see who that is, will you? Why, I think it's stomach on wheels. Oh, let's give a meal at it. That kettle. That's me <laughs> We'll never catch it at the rate it's going. What we need is transport. Come on. This is where we keep the post bus. Quick, hop in. in the post bus. With Dead Glen. I hope they don't take that tin machine with them. There'll be rust and lost screws everywhere. I can't see it, Ted. Hang on. What's this? Whatever's happened to your van, Sam? Am I glad to see you both? Real frightening it was. This this UFO from outer space. It came belting down the road. Couldn't help it, but I had to go straight into this field to dodge it. Which way did it go? It looked as if it was heading for Thompson Ground. Do you think I should call P.C. Selby? <laughs> I don't think he'd believe you. Let's take a shortcut across the field. We might be able to cut it off before it gets there. Ian, don't forget, I'm in the back. Way up. Hang on. Ah, whoa! Be steady on. They arrived at Thompson Round the back way. <laughs> Quick, Pat, before it does any damage. <laughs> Dorothy wondered why the chickens were making such a noise. Then this thing waving its arms came along. Oh, cheeky devil. Sorry about the washing, Dorothy. Is that elf shirt it's wearing? It's got my apron as well. <laughs> Who's this driving through the farmyard? Hey up! It's a muddy field. Won't go far. 
Is that the shirt it's wearing? I'll tell you later. He's slowing down. Must have mud up to its chin. He's stuck. Can't move. Right. I better go and fetch it. Well, it was a nice try, Ted. Thanks. Nay, leave it for now. It makes a grand scarecrow. I've been having no end of bother with the crows, and, and look, it scared them off. As for the robot, he seemed quite happy where he was, keeping the crows away from Alf's field. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Time for the post to be on its way in Greendale. Time to get a move on, Jess. This old van, thought Pat. Wasn't it about time he had something a little more up to date? Before leaving the village, he stopped at the vicarage. Oh dear me! What a rush! Oh, good! There's Pat! Hello, Pat. I'm so glad you're in good time. Morning, Reverend. Dear me, what a rush! What's the hurry? Oh, do come in. I'm sure you can help. It's all to do with Mr. Pringle and the Major. Always at the last minute. Bless us all. It's this film show they're giving. All about... Now, uh, what did the Major say? Something about flying, I believe. It says in this paper that there's to be a surprise arrival. I'd love to see that. Oh, do come. Uh, tea? Um, yes, please. Bring Sarah and Julian. Bring as many people as you can. Day after tomorrow. Thing is, there's not much time to tell people. Oh, don't worry. I'll tell everybody. I see most folks on my rounds. That's kind, Pat. And if you could give them a leaflet as well. Miss Hubbard's running them off on that machine of hers. She's my next call. I'll pick up a good pile of leaflets, don't you worry. Thanks for the tea. Bye. Bye, Pat. 
Pat couldn't help wondering what the surprise arrival was to be. Would the Major be dressing up? Maybe he'd come in a new car. And would Miss Hubbard know about these things? Here we are. I hope Miss Hubbard's got the leaflets ready. Anyone at home? Morning, Pat. Oh, you're just in time. Hello, Miss Hubbard. Uh, anything the matter? The copy has stopped right in the middle of printing these leaflets for... The Major's film show. Oh, so you know. Well, there's not a minute to lose. It's all in a rush. But I'm sure you'll find the fault in no time. Hmm, I don't know. Um, let's try and move a few things and see what happens. Have you tried these buttons? Of course. I suppose this piece, it just slides... Oops! Oh, it's come off. Oh, Pat, do take care. I wonder what's hiding in here. Whatever it is, it's come undone. It's amazing what you can find on these machines. Little doors that... Hey, up, something's just dropped out. Oh, it's made a right mess. The floor. Oh, what's all that black powder? Oh, dear, oh, dear. It's a bit mucky, isn't it? You wouldn't think there'd be so much in it. Just a minute. Uh, hold that. Oh, Pat, I I'm rather worried. Lots of bits to go back. There's got to be something in here. There you are. A piece of paper jamming the works. Now, where did this come from? <laughs> Sounds a bit rough, doesn't it? Well, it seems to be working. I'm sure it'll settle down. Hmm, it is rather smudgy and a little lopsided, do you think? Never mind. They'll make out the most important bits. Um, I'll tell them about the parts they can't read. Uh, best be on my way. Cheerio! But, Pat, what about the mess? Oh, well, I never. Jess thought Pat needed a wash. Perhaps a cat lick would do. <laughs> but then, maybe not. The smell of burnt paper put him off. Thompson Brown, next stop. Hello, Pat. Morning, Pat. Morning, everyone. A mucky one, if you ask me. I wish you'd told us you were sweeping chimneys in your spare time. <laughs> We've got a couple that need doing. Oh, don't you listen to him, Pat. But we've got plenty of hot water, if you'd like a wash. Uh, no thanks, Dorothy. There's no time. What with all this post to deliver, and these leaflets about the Major's film show to give out, uh, I hope you'll come. Oh, yes, we'll come all right. <laughs> so long as we don't get mucky faces like yours, Pat. <laughs> Nay, there's no chance of that. Bye. Bye, Pat. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. Ted Glenn was sorting out some wood when Pat arrived. Hello, Pat. Hello, Ted. What's all this about, then? A film show? Gee, I've always been interested in flying. I'll definitely be there. But what have you been up to, Pat? 
<laughs> Mending that old van of yours again. Oh, it's a long story, Ted. And I haven't got time to stop. Anyway, I'll see you at the film show. Bye. Right you are then, but Cheers. The day of the film show came. Children, down at the front, please. When does it start? Will they be selling ice cream? Can you it down? It's dropped. Oh, I knew the major would be late. Good. Here's Pat. I'm sure he can help. Have you seen the major, Pat? Missing, is he, Reverend? Did I tell you about the surprise? Surprise? Surprise, Reverend? I think you did mention it. Yes, the Major promised there would be a surprise. But oh dear, he's late. Tell you what, I'll pop up to Garner Hall and see if he needs a hand with anything. Won't be long. There was scaffolding all up one side, but no sign of the Major. Hmm, but he's not in. Help! Ahoy! What's that? You down there! I'm hearing voices. Pat! Can't you hear me, man? Hello! I chose the man's deaf. Where are you? Pat! Who's that on the roof? It was Major Forbes waving from the basket of a hot air balloon. It's me, you noodle. Do pay attention, Pat. My jolly old anchor rope has got mixed up with the chimneys, what? Be a good fellow. Climb up and see if you can cast me off. You, you want me to go up there? Uh, ooh, I'm not very good on roofs. I get dizzy. Why do I always get these jobs? I wish Ted Glenn was here. He's good at climbing onto roofs. What are you doing up here, Major? In that basket thing? There's no time for idle chat, man. Catch hold of that rope. I don't believe I'm doing this. It's wrapped itself round the chimney stack. Steady on. It's not easy on these tiles. Whoops! Let me get this untangled. Now, uh, which way does it go? Come along, Pat. I'm trying my best. Shake a leg, I'm late as it is. Hey, up. Where are you going? Don't leave yet. Come back. I want to get off. I'll be with you in a jiffy. But I'm out here, and I don't like it. Now that we're moving, must see all shipshape. Help! I want to get off. Ooh. Where's my van? Sorry, Pat. Can't stop. Just hang on for dear life. Ooh, it's a long way down there. Help, pull me up. Stop fussing, man, and get in. Heave ho. Put me down. I want to get off. Ooh. You're all right now. Safe and sound. Where has the Major got to? I can't see anyone. Can you... Oops! Oh, I'm sorry. It's all this looking up at the sky. It's making me quite dizzy. The sky is where the surprise is coming from, Reverend. But I can't see what that has to do with Major Forbes. Look, what's that? Where? Where? Oh, no. That big thing in the sky. It's coming this way. It, it takes a balloon. balloon. There's the church. And the post office. Hey up, Major. There's a tree coming up fast. I'll give her a blast. Up she goes. Well, I never. Pat and the Major in a hot air balloon. What a surprise indeed. 
the Major and Bat dropping from the skies. There's the Major. And Pat! Wow, what a lark! Yippee! This is great! Yeah, yeah. super fast! I would yeah, never have great. done it without Pat. It was those stupid chimneys of mine. Got caught, what? I would never have guessed, Major, that you were an expert on hot air balloons. Now come and tell us some more. Hello, one and all. Nice to see so many of you here today. I thought it might be of interest if I told you of my adventures travelling by hot air balloon in different places around the world. Thank you, Mr Pringle. I was stationed at the time on the west coast of Africa, and my first trip started just outside the town of Binji. I remember just missing the rooftops by inches. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. It was a warm morning in Greendale, and there were plenty of letters and parcels for Pat to deliver. Whoops! Oh, sorry. Whatever are you doing with my bike, Pat? I... I just didn't see it. Goodness me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. It's taken a bit of a knock. Sorry, Miss Hubbard. It's all this post to deliver. I didn't see your bike. There's just too much rushing about. Mm, the bike looks all right. I'll pop round when I have a minute. Goodness me, Pat. I hope you'll take more care. I'd better get a move on. Cheerio. Just the thing for the twins' nasty cold. Not like the stuff we had in the old days when I was a girl. Morning, Doctor. Hello, Pat. Well, I never. Express delivery. Sorry. Can't stop. Bye. Hello and goodbye then, Pat. Pat was soon out in his van, delivering the day's post to the countryside, trying not to hurry. First stop, Ted Glenn's workshop. Who's that tooting? Now then, Pat, what's up? Sorry, Ted, can't stop. In a rush today. Bye! Well, I'll be flummoxed. What's old Pat rushing off like that for? Just when I fancied a good matter. But Pat had no time to stop and batter. There was post to deliver. First, 
some letters for Greendale Farm. Mrs. Pottage heard him pull up outside. Morning. Morning, Pat. You're just in time for a cup of tea. Very kind of you. Just half a cup, please. You're not telling me there's so much post that you can't stop for a chat. That reminds me. I'll have to find time to call on Miss Hubbard. I ran into her bike this morning. Rushing about. Oh, that's what Miss Hubbard said. Hey, is that the right time? I'll have to get a move on. There's a lot to do today. Thanks for the tea. Bye, Mrs. Pottage. Bye, Pat. Outside, Jess wasn't looking too happy. Hey, Jess, what's happened? Oh, my sandwiches. Who's done that? They've eaten the whole lot, rotten things. The sandwich robbers of Greendale strike again. It can't be the hens this time. This is a case for PC Selby. But no time to stop for clues. No sandwiches. And miles away from home. The next stop was at Thompson Ground. Morning, Dorothy. A letter for you today. Oh, hello, Pat. Thanks. Any news? <laughs> There's news, all right. I bent Miss Hubbard's bike a bit in the village, and someone's nicked my lunch while I was parked at Greendale Farm. Oh, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder who could have pinched your sandwiches. But never mind, I've something nice in the oven. There's plenty to spare, so don't you worry. I'm just off to the garden first, then we'll see what we can do. Just come and look at my carrots, the real champion. Oh, my! Oh, heavens! Oh, it's awful! It's all dug up! Massacrated! What's happened? All the carrots gone. Some just nibbled, others half chewed. I don't believe it. Who could have done a thing like this? The garden's ruined. Just look at my lovely carrots. What monster has done this? First my sandwiches, now your carrots. <laughs> it must be a very hungry monster. I'm going to ring PC Selby. He'll know what to do. It might be somewhat dangerous, somewhat, somewhat big and dreadful. Come out of, I don't know where. Poor old Pat. Dorothy was in such a fluster that she has forgotten all about lunch. Pat and Jess went on their way, feeling more and more hungry and keeping a lookout for the monster. There was something going on at Granny Dryden's cottage. All the washing had been thrown into the road. What's all this? Oh, Pat, look at me washing. The line's broken and me new sheets are all dirty in the road. And me best pillowcase is gone. I don't know what's happening. But there's been trouble all up the dale. Someone nicked my lunch and all the carrots out of Dorothy Thompson's garden. And now you're washing. It's some beast from the moors, you mark my word. Bye, Granny Dryden. Jess was wishing that the beast was a nice fat mouse. He was hungry, and so was Pat. 
And what's this? I'd recognize that bike anywhere. It's Miss Hubbard's. Oh, Pat. How glad I am to see you. What is it, Miss Hubbard? Have you had an accident? I was on my way home when this thing with hooves and, and an enormous head covered with a white sort of bag came out of the field. It snorted at me, but I fell off. It looks as though you've met the beast. That's what I called it. Then it pinched the apples from my basket, so I took a swipe at it with my brolly and jumped the wall. I'll tell PC Selby as soon as I get to the village, so don't worry. Will you be all right now? Oh, yes, I'll be fine. Mind how you go, Pat. Cheerio. Do be careful, Pat. There was a registered letter for the Major. Morning, Pat. He was busy in the garden. Morning, Major. A registered letter for you. Look at this, Pat. My best begonia shattered. And I know who did it. A huge monster it was, rampaging all round the gardens with a mysterious white shroud over its head. I must say it has made a mess. I do hear it's the famous beast of Greendale, risen from its lair in the moors. Ah, I'll give it beast of Greendale, making a mess of my gardens. We'll have to hunt the thing down, get help from the village, chase it back to, to, from wherever it came from. Hang on. Listen. Bells? At this time of the day? I can't think why. Unless... By Jove! The beast is after the Reverend, and he's calling for help. Come along, Pat. Not a minute to lose. I just hope we're not too late. Whatever is going on? The noise! Morning, Reverend. Glad to see you fit and well. Oh, hello, Major Forbes. And Pat. I am glad you've come. We thought it was you ringing the bell. N no, I I'm not ringing the bell. I mean, how can I be? The bell rope's inside. And I'm out here, oh dear. Right, men. We'd better investigate. Lead the way, Major. Uh, well, I, I think you should go first, Pat. I'll bring up the rear. Off you go. You're next. Uh, but, but why me? Well, it's your church after all. Are you coming with me, Major? Well, uh, no. Bad strategy, you know. I'll stay here and secure your line of retreat, what? Off you go, there's a good chap. Nothing to worry about. I don't like this. All he needs to do is to take the bull by the horns, what? Horns? Did you say horns? Ah. Hello? I think we found the beast of Greendale. Quick, run! Say, <laughs> be careful, Major. Well, I never fancy finding him here. Here, give over. Little devil, I can hardly hear myself think with that bell you've got entangled with. Ouch! That was my foot. Morning, all. Well, I know. What is he doing? Oh, Dad, you've caught her at last. Yes, well, uh, 
It's a pity it took me so long. Who knows what she's been up to, apart from getting entangled in this bell rope and making a racket. And we all thought it was the Beast of Greendale. Beast of what? <laughs> oh dear me, it's no beast. It's only Lucy's pony. I'll make up for any damage she's done. <laughs> I think you'll have a few gardens to dig and put to rights. I'll help. We'll all help. Beast of Greendale. Ah, humbug. Bless her. Bye-bye, and thanks, everybody. Yes, bye, everyone. Well, <laughs> I'd rather ride in my van. For one thing, <laughs> it doesn't eat carrots. <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. started early one morning when Peter Fogg met Mrs. Pottage. Morning, Peter. Morning, Mrs. Pottage. She was on her way to the post office with a big parcel. A very big parcel. Shop? Anybody in? Hello, Mrs. Pottage. I was just brewing up. Would you like a cup? Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Well, I'd love one, but I mustn't stop. Don't want to be late taking the twins into Pencaster. Not too disappointed about the tour, are they? They'll be back by this evening, in time to join in the fun. How much for the parcel? Now, that'll be three pounds, please. Still, it's a pity the twins will be missing the mystery tour. Oh, they're too excited about their birthday treat to worry about that. Well, I must say, it's certainly a mystery. Even Pat, who's taking them in the post bus, doesn't know where they're going. Oh, that must be him now. Morning, all. Morning, Pat. There you are, Pat. I'd better be off. Good luck with the mystery tour. Don't get lost. I think getting lost might be part of the fun. Well, it'll make a change from delivering the post. <laughs> it certainly will. 
I wonder where Mr. Pringle is taking us. Bless me, is that the time? I must be off. They'll be waiting for me at the school. Bye for now. Bye, Pat. Pat was on his way. He had already done his rounds early. And there was nothing to pick up. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. It wasn't far. Just round the corner to the village school. He was right on time. What are we waiting for? Anyone missing? Let me see. Lucy, Sarah, Julian, Charlie and Bill. Good. All present. Hello, Pat. Ready? Hello, everyone. I'm ready to go when you are. But where to? Well, I think that someone should read out the first clue. Who is it to be? Me. 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 Lisa. Lisa. Me. 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 I want to. I want to. Me. 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 Mr. Pringle gave the paper to Lucy Selby. Find a spinning granny. She'll give you some thread. A spinning granny. She'll get dizzy. Mine would. Now then. We want to be home before dark, so have a good think, then let's be off. First, how can a granny spin without getting dizzy? A coin? With a washing machine? A wheel? A spinning wheel? I know who has a wheel like that. Granny Dryden. Shall we go and see? First stop. Granny Dryden, please, Pat. I think I know where that is. All aboard the post bus. Come along, children. Hooray! 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 Mind the step. I'm first. Don't pull. I want a seat near the window. Where's Charlie? Mr. Pringle going to sit in front with Mind Pat. the door. Come on, Lucy, you're holding the court shop. You'd better sit with me, Mr. Pringle, in case we get lost. Off they went. Sit down, I can't see. I bet I'll solve all of the street questions. I bet you don't, I bet you don't. I will, I will. I'm better at it than you are. I wish we could have this ever. It was very quiet at Granny Dryden's cottage. Charlie knocked at the door, whilst Lucy peeped in at the window. I'm first. Don't push. Was this the mysterious bit? They all crept in to find out. What a surprise. Sitting at an old-fashioned spinning wheel, in clothes they had only seen in books, was Granny Dryden, fast asleep. <coughs> oh, dearie me. I must have dropped off to sleep. Granny Dryden, we're the mystery tour. We've come for the thread. I nearly forgot. Now, now, what did I do with it? It's somewhere in here. Ah, what's this? That's it, I think. Thanks, Granny Dryden. Oh, a little parcel. Hmm, there's a reel of cotton. And it says on the paper, go to a place where the night is not dark. Give the cotton to a lady. Where the night is not dark, but it's always dark at night. I know where there's a knight. Well, his suit of armor anyway. At Garner Hall, where Major Forbes lives. And the suit of armor is bright and shiny, so it's never dark. What about the lady? There's only Major Forbes at Garner Hall. I suggest we go and find out. Bye, Granny Dragon. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Um, won't you stop for a cup of tea? Ooh, we'd, we'd love one, but we have to be off. Uh, sorry. Bye. Thanks, Granny Dryden. 
I wish we could have this every day instead of school. All aboard Vagana Hall. You mustn't make a mistake on a mystery tour. Otherwise, you end up getting lost. But Pat soon found Garner Hall. His next stop. Where's the die? Spooky, I call it. There's no lady either. I can hear someone. <laughs> Made it at last. Hello, one and all. Hey, up. It's the night. Lady Hubbard greets you with her basket of surprises. Now, who's to give me something? Oh, you do look lovely, Miss Hubbard. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Now, what about the basket? Thanks, Miss Hubbard. Have a look in the basket. You might find the next clue. I've got it. It says, find a royal crown in a very small town. Go post haste. There is no time to waste. A royal crown? Haven't seen any in Greendale. There's one on the post bus. And there's another on Pat's van. Pat always stops at the post office. We'll ask him to stop there again today, shall we? Come on. Good luck. Bye. Bye-bye. Mind how you go. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Cheerio. That wasn't easy. But we're not finished yet. Bet we get the next one quick. Look who's talking. Oh, shut up, you two. It didn't take them long to get back to the village and on to the post office. Here they come. Oh, I feel all funny dressed up like this. Hooray for Greendale. Gracious me. It sounds as though you're at a football match. Are you part of the mystery tour? We are. We are. Could I have the next clue, please? Um, uh, now, how did it go? Uh, I've got it. Take the road to a place where a tree stands tall. Don't let a man stop you if he should call. Take and blow this trumpet, then wait. And this key will later help you to open the gate. I think we can remember that. Thanks. Off you go, Pat. Careful. See you soon. Have fun. Bye. Bye. The children were quiet. They were thinking about the next clue. Then, Charlie had a go on the toy trumpet. It wasn't very quiet after that. What's this? A highwayman. Um, stand and deliver. Uh, the thing's stuck. Um, come on. What's he doing, Mr. Pringle? I think he's got something caught in his coat pocket. Ah, got you. <laughs> Your money or I'll tickle you helpless. <laughs> Julian, I think you should ask Ted for the last clue. Here you are, young Julian. Thanks, Mr. Highwayman. Cheers. Mr. Pringle, I've got the next clue. Let's not waste time. I'll read it out. Oh, do shut it up. It says, you must find a straw man. He works all day and he works all night. He stands quite still to give the birds a fright. Blow the trumpet and unlock the gate. I've got the trumpet. We know. What about the straw man? It's a scarecrow. Next stop, a scarecrow. Bye, highwayman. Bye, Ted. Bye. 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 Mind how you go. I wish I could dress up like that. And I'd take money off people. You'd lose your specs, silly. They soon came to the scarecrow. He was standing outside Thompson Brown. Come on, follow me. Where's for me? Because I've got the key. Oh, it's fiddly. Got it. We're here. We made it. Oh, look. They've got 
Drinks! Just in time. Come and get it. I bet you're all hungry. There's plenty for everybody. Safe and sound. And thirsty. Have you got something for a hungry highwayman? Hello. Welcome to the fancy dress party. Yippee! I want a hat like ten glens. Jess was there, wondering what all the fuss was about. Well, what's the mystery? Hey, you finally made it. It was the children who got us here. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.